In this video, I'm hopefully going to explain to you my thought processes and considerations when I'm creating my composite images. I hope everybody's staying safe during these times, so I thought I would take the time uh, that we have just to explain to you and talk you through some of the thought processes and the considerations I make when creating images. And it's in this case, the composite images and with Luminar 4.2. Might be a wee bit of a long video, but it won't be too long. I'll try and tailor it so that it isn't, but hopefully from it you'll get what, in this case, I think when I'm creating images. I, I'm a big lover of sci-fi. I'm a big lover of surreal images as well. And I have been since I was a child. Uh, books by Tim White, artist books by Tim White, Chris Achilleus, Boris Vallejo, uh, images like that. I absolutely love that type of imagery. I tried my hand at art, but I wasn't that great at it. And I don't think I could have sustained a career doing it. So uh, that's why I moved on to the digital side of things. With these images, this is your imagination. That This is the good thing about this. It's whatever you've got up here that you can put onto, in this case, a digital screen. And then print it at the end if you want. I'm going to talk through one of my images and break it right down into the separate layers for you uh, that I'm currently doing. I'm doing a series and I, I explain why I'm doing the series as well. You can tell that I record the actual edits before the intro and outro of these. So you can see why I'm talking from the past into the future and from the future into the past. Uh, but hopefully you'll stick with this and hopefully it'll give you an idea just for yourselves and the considerations to make as well. Again though, I will say this is your imagination. So if someone says to you, you can't have the sun there because the sun is hitting the planets or the mountains on this side, there could be two suns. That's it. This is your imagination. There is nothing apart from that. These images are yours. You can do them well, and you can learn to do them better, and you could just be starting out. Critique is a great thing. Critique is a great thing. But when it comes to a total disapproval because the laws of reality say this can't be, that's a different thing altogether. Eh, this is your imagination. This is your imagination. And I'll keep saying that because it's a brilliant thing. And if you've got the imagination to do it, let it run wild. Let it run free for this. So to save me harping on about that kind of thing and harping on at the images, I'll dive right into one and I'll break it down. And the first one I'll dive into will be the isolation series that I'm doing just now. I'm going to show you the image and I'm going to break it down into individual layers. I copied the image into Photoshop to do it. And I'm going to break it down into in individual layers and then talk to you about the image itself and my considerations when I was putting the image together or creating the image, however you want to see it. Uh, and I'll talk to you about that during it. So without further ado, let's go for it. Okay, the image that I'm going to show you and talk you through my thought process is this one here. Uh, this image is created, as I said, it's a part of a series that I'm doing during this these times of isolation. So it's a fun thing for me to do. But I'm going to talk you through where my ideas came from and how I planned on the image. So I'm going to take this right back to the basics. For the purposes of this, I've recreated the image in Photoshop. I overlaid it, cut it out, so everything should be roughly where it is. The image you see just now is the final image that was created in Luminar. I've brought that one in and then cut everything out to match it up. So I could have done it in Photoshop, but I'm really enjoying Luminar. I really, really do enjoy Luminar and enjoy the the way it finishes off my images for me as well. So I'll take this back to the start. Right, as you can see with this, this is the grey background and I'll put a download below. The grey backgrounds for me, I use them, if you haven't seen any of the previous videos, I use them so that 
when I bring it into Luminar, I have a grey background. I then add an image. And with that image added, it means that I can layer transform and use that image. And I can scale it and everything. And I've still got a background element there. If you bring your straight image in, your, your raw file or whatever it is you're doing, if you bring that straight in, that works as the back layer. So that's why I use the grey ones. I'll put some grey ones below in this video as well. Next thing I brought in was, or I better mention the white border. The white border is when I opened it again, back up in Photoshop, I added a two inch white border around these. I'm creating these as prints for myself, so that's why I put a two inch border around them. The first thing I brought in was this image here, which was found in a Unsplash, and it suited what I was trying for this. The idea I come up with, I'm doing this Spaceman for these series of images and what I've come up with is I want different kind of funny anecdotal images to go along with the series. So I just thought, how's about one coming in from space? I'll show you the rest. I'll put the rest up at the end or I've already put them up at the beginning. I'm not sure. Uh, and I'll show you them. So that was the first thing that I brought in. The next thing that I wanted was, for this, was... I've got my microphone sitting in front of me here. Uh, what I was doing for this was I wanted the stars in the background. So when I brought it into Luminar, I used the Layer Transform tool, and what I did was I scaled it to size to where I think it would fit. I then put it in and what I did was I created a gradient blend with this layer, the layer of the clouds. And the reason the gradient blend was there was so that you could see like, the upper atmosphere. In this case, I know it wasn't. It was just clouds, but I decided to make it an upper atmosphere. And then the stars showing in the background. And what I did, I'll just create a new layer here just to show you so that I can draw with this. What I did was I used the layer blending option of the gradient blend. And I, I brought it down at an angle and I brought it down at roughly that angle there. That's roughly the angle I brought it in at. And the reason I brought it in at that angle is because if I brought it down straight, I don't think it would have worked. And again, my reasoning for that is the earth is round. So as you can see, we've got a slight angle there. And with that slight angle, it kind of adds to the effect as well. So we're building this image up quite slowly. But with careful consideration, as I say, it's just my thought process. And I thought it might help uh, for some of you or with some of you. So I'll turn that back off. The next part I brought in was the astronaut himself. Uh, I've actually purchased the astronaut. The astronaut's not a free image, so I've purchased that from a stock site. And as I say, it's free falling. This this one, this is isolation, self isolation, D eight free falling. It's called. Uh, and I brought him in, and I cut him out using the masking option. Uh, if I'd used any of the blending options some of his suit would have disappeared. So what I did was I just took my time and I cut round them. And because this is a series of prints for myself, I can take my time with this. So I did, and I got it to where I needed it to be for this. The angle that he's at, if I show you here, and I click on there, with the rule of thirds, you can see that he's filling up most of the centre of the row of thirds. So you're drawn straight into him anyway. And you can see he's crossing across here. So you've got a nice little weed and everything coming in for that as well. The next thing that I did was I created a stamped layer out of this. And with the stamped layer, what I did was I added the sun flares. First time I added the sun flare, because of what this image gives off. You can see that in here there is a slight yellowing on his costume. So that actually made this perfect. For that, nothing breaks the horizon, or the upper atmosphere should I say. Nothing breaks that, as you can see there. Only his, and even his hand doesn't do it. So nothing breaks that, none of these clouds come out. So it actually worked out well with the fact that the slight yellow coming through here and down here, it meant I could put in a sun flare in this. So as if the sun's coming over the horizon. So that's what I did. 
First time I did, and you can see this one's got the toilet roll. I'll turn the toilet roll off. I do one with the toilet roll and one without the toilet roll. So what I'll do is I'll turn the toilet roll off. And I'll just show you the one with without the toilet roll. So the first thing I did was I added a sun flare. And once it was happy with it, I adjusted it and I adjusted the length and everything of it. Uh, the sun beams. And then once I was happy with that, what I did was I stamped the layer again. And I put in a second one on the stamped layer so that I could get more of an effect that I was after. Uh, and that allowed me to do that. So that, that's why that was brought in there. These are some real images. These are from your imagination. So you take into consideration what's going on round about. Uh, and the light's coming in there. In this case, the sun is coming over the horizon. What you can see is the light here is picking that. And you can actually see the shadows that are caused and that's nothing to do with this that was in the image so that was a consideration I made when I was choosing the images as well and also the fact the light that was on him where the light source was going to come from but had there been another light source here these are surreal images these are composites there could be another sun in the sky who can see any different this is from your imagination you're meant to enjoy doing these the criticisms that you may get that this can't be true because the sun is on that side and these the shadows on that side, these are composites and these are from, from your imagination. So just enjoy doing them and don't take any heed of the negative comments. These are for you. Anyway, back towards this image. The next thing I did once that was in, I added an adjustment layer. And in this adjustment layer, I edited all my blues. I'm not a big fan of bright blues in my images. So I took the colour and the saturation, the lightness and the uh, saturation of the blues down to where I was happy. Then I created a new adjustment layer. And in that new adjustment layer, I added again my favourite, because I think it works well with the blues and the style of images that I do. It's Camden, the old Camden look with this. And I toned that back, I think to around, I think it was a bit, 91 I can't remember correctly but I took that back to about 91 and that's how this image came together as I say there's a full series of them or there's going to be a full series of them I'm really enjoying doing these during the times of isolation and it's it's fun to do and it's fun to push your imagination with them from the point of view the imagination side my constant in each of these images is a spaceman and when you purchase the image, in this case, so far I've downloaded four of the Spaceman in different positions. Uh, one purchase each time. So I've downloaded four of these. I have to then go and search the rest to find out what idea is going to come in next and how I'm going to make that. So I'm actually creating images around him. And that's the good thing about this. Instead of just creating an image and throwing everything at it and going, there you go, there's an image. There's actually a focus here and as I say, there's a running theme through this. It's isolation, but the main character of the isolation is the spaceman. And that's actually holding everything together and holding, and actually not holding, but challenging how you look at the images and how you create the images and the considerations you have to make with that. So I hope that answers that for this image. This image here is inspired by Terry Gilliam. Uh, if you don't know who he is, think about Monty Python and but in his own right he's a fantastic animator and this is who this is actually inspired by. Uh, if you've seen any of the films you might see a couple of key points from this or any of the shorts uh, that he's made so you maybe see a couple in there and you can see where how I've been inspired by that to create this image this image uh, and I'll put a link to the video if you haven't seen it up here this image is this chap here looking in towards a misty forest and that's it and that's the image so there was a lot of negative space up here so when I saw that image I thought that's plenty of negative space that I could fill fill it with something that would make the image jump out uh, and if you see the video if you take a look at the video you'll see that even after without placing this element in it 
even with the moon, it could be a finished image itself. And that was added via uh, AI Augmented Sky and Luminar 4.2, as well as these clouds here. And if, as I say, if you watch the video, you'll see how it's created. This main image here, the main focal point of the image, is made up of one, two, three, four, five separate images all massed together and then created uh, to bring into this image. And I created this that part of it in Photoshop simply because I wanted to get the video out really quick. Uh, so I, actually six, I forgot about that. Uh, so I wanted that, so I created it in Photoshop and then brought it into uh, Luminar. I use both packages, I love my compositing. Uh, so I use both packages for this. Mainly, to be totally honest with you, I mainly use Luminar because I'm really enjoying, it's fun trying new things. And when you're creating some of these images, if it was to do it in Photoshop, I would go, right, okay, I can do this, 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 this and this to get the final image. Luminar has its own tools and its own methods of getting there. So I like learning new things. And that's why I do this as well, because I like learning new things. Sometimes you've got to think backwards. Depends what software you get into, whether it's Affinity, Photoshop, Luminar, whatever software you're editing. And sometimes you have to kind of deconstruct what you would normally do in a set process and move it around. If you watch the uh, Soldiers video, as well, Last Men Standing, you'll see that some of the layers I move around, but I edit them in place first and then move them to get the final effect. So it's just the thought process that goes around it. And it's your imagination, so go wild with it. Once you learn the techniques, that's the main thing. That is the main thing with these. So that's a kind of brief overview of this image. On its own, with a chap standing looking into the misty trees, great image. On its own, with the moon, I really loved what happened with that. Uh, it just it filled in, there was lots of negative space here that I could use. But for me, the finishing touches was this. This gives us the main elements. And as I say, I'm not pushing you towards the video to watch it. But if you go and watch it, you'll see what I was thinking when I was actually creating the images. And why I was doing it. I'm not just going, move this slider and do that and do that. I actually tell you as well what I'm thinking as I do it. The birds, for example, they're in a stamped layer and they're put in via AI Augmented Sky. The moon's put in via AI Augmented Sky and these clouds here are put in via Augmented Sky. So you can see everything that happens in, within this image and it was, it was fun to do and I love doing these. So hopefully that's explained that image as well. Hopefully you stuck with this to the end because I think it would be quite a long one and, and hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you got something from it. As I say, it's just the way I work. It doesn't mean it's the way you have to work. As I say, this is your imagination and it's free to run wild. That's the big thing. It's free to run wild. Everybody doing the same thing over and over and over and over again makes for blandness. So run wild with your images, enjoy what you create, explore the software, enjoy the software, have fun with the software, create what you want. These are your worlds, your imagination. Hopefully you stuck with us to the end and if you enjoyed this different video, please consider checking out some of the videos below and if you're currently not a subscriber, please think about subscribing as that would be greatly appreciated. Until the next video, thanks again for watching.